Hello there, welcome to my channel. My name is Sherry Hart and I'm based in Nova Scotia, Canada. On my YouTube channel, I just share my experience about life here in Canada. Also, I did a bit of immigration because I'm a regulated Canadian peer consultant and LCIC. This is me on my way to the airport to go to Saudi Arabia for Aj. In this video, I'm taking you through my Aj journey. I started this journey with Bismillah and I pray that inshallah I end with Alhamdulillah. I'm excited, I'm anxious, I'm grateful, I'm thankful. And the day is here. So I'm leaving from Lagos, Nigeria, to Medina, and then to Mecca for Aj. So come with me on this journey. I hope you enjoy it. Come, come, come. Ah, it's a privilege. So Aj means pilgrimage. It's one of the pillars of Islam, the last pillar of Islam for those that can afford it. Alhamdulillah for the resources I'm able to afford. See you. I'm gonna I'm gonna miss you soon. Miss you. Abila. Abila. Are you going to us? But can I go to a car with you? Car. Uh, yeah, come with car, but you come down, baby. Yeah, go in the car. Nabila, may Allah be with you. I'm going for Aj now. Have me your prayers. I have you my prayers. I'll miss you. Allah will be with you, inshallah. Okay, be good. Don't stress, Grandma, okay? Yes. Bye. Okay. Bye. Love you too. Oh, yeah. If you don't cry, okay? We promise not to cry, right? Come down now. Yeah, my mom is going for something. But can't go with the car. For those of you who have been following my vlogs about my trip to Nigeria, remember that I told you we went to Ibadan from Lagos. So my mom and my siblings stay in Ibadan. Some of my cousins, that'd be my siblings rather, stay in Ibadan. So I went to Ibadan for some days. So I went to the airport from Ibadan. So this is us on on our way to Lagos Airport from Ibadan. It's just to show you the road. Lagos Ibadan Expressway. And this is Moe in on the Cosabada Expressway. I don't know if you remember that I told that we used to live on the Cosabada Expressway around Ipa 4 signs. So it was just us on our way and it brought back memories. You know, I'll show you our former estate that we used to live. That's Nasfat. Then the opposite side of it, we used to live on that estate. It was called Greenland Estate. So we lived there before we moved to Nigeria, to Canada. Let me tell you that one of the reasons why I relocated was this road. Hey, this road healed me, Hege. Meanwhile, when I got married, we, 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 I lived all my life in Saudi Arabia. But when I got married, we moved to first start extension. And then Abdul got, uh, it was moved from his job to uh, their office on the Gossip Express. So that was one of the reasons why we moved. And honestly, <laughs> one of the big regrets I had in living in Nigeria was living on this road. It was frustrating. The traffic, I won't say I had regret because there were some things that I also liked about the estate. There were people I met in this estate that added some form of colors to my life. But applying this road was very frustrating. If Redeem is not doing a program this week, NASFAT is doing, or the roads are bad, or there's traffic. There's always one traffic or the other, one accent or the other. If trailers are not falling, trucks are falling. Meanwhile, when we are going to a battle from Lagos, honestly, there was an accident that experienced right in front of us. This truck or this trailer, I think, it lost control of his brake and he hit a car, like right in front of us. It happened right in front of us. One of the things that I suffered playing this road. This is where the car arrived with the cell. So it was doing, it was towards, it was close to it. So there are a lot of cows, rams on the road. That's Kara where they sell, you know, rams and cows. We passed there. It was just, you know, you know, nice seeing all this again. 
a bunch of bad memories and this is us in lagos you remember for those of you who live in lagos you know these three wise men that welcome you to lagos that's so when we got to lagos the ride was very smooth there was no traffic uh to the glory of god uh so i went with a group uh for arch like a travel company that organizes arch and umrah so we asked to get to the airport some hours before takeoff so we could you know do everything documentation coming together and just you know not being late for our flight and so i just so this was us so if you live in lagos it was these are familiar places to you i guess this is somewhere which so just past the burger this is uh where you're going to allow sir and this is Ojota, i think it was just nice seeing these places again honestly it was really really nice when we were going there was traffic in it to be passed through over with Shoki. uh yeah it was just nice seeing these places again So I had feared, you know, being able to cope when I come to Lagos. I was wondering, oh, things have changed, like people to adapt and all of that. But honestly, I was able to adapt like a lot of things. Even some things have changed, but most things are still pretty much the same or similar. So it didn't feel strange to me at all. The places looked the same. There's few changes here and there. And it was just nice to see my darling Lagos again. Honestly, I missed Lagos, so I'm happy I came to see my Lagos again, even though some things can be better. Uh, so one of the things I think that can be better is the um, traffic management. Even though I think the last time is trying their beats, but I think that things can be better. And also, it's not only about the government or the regulators for traffic. I think individuals as well can do better. In their driving style their patience level and all of that can be better i think with this things can get better on the roads anyways i handle like we got to the airport safely i joined my other co pilgrims you know that we are traveling with the same um travel company these people have become my family some of them because we flew together some of us things in the same room we did the arch rides together some of them are now like family, like mothers, like sisters, like friends, brothers, fathers, and all of even grandmothers. They 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 a lot of uh, adults, like sorry, old people, people who are aged, you know, mamas, papas. It was nice to meet all of them, and I pray that Almighty Allah accepts our age. This is also the mosque you know, in the airports. They have a mosque there, so we observe it as Zuru prayer, I think, uh, and Zuru and Asri, I think. Because our flight was in the evening, even though we were asked to come to the airport around 12 or thereabouts, so we were able to check in with the security, observe their prayers, and then we went to board our flight. And this is, meanwhile, this is the uh, business class or first class. Before, I used to think that people that fly business class and first class drive go on a different plane. I didn't know that it was the same plane we all come on. It was like some years that I just knew that same plane but they sit like in the front and all of that anyway i walked into my own economy cabin keke to sit down and uh, enjoy this flight it was qatar uh, airline very wonderful they had good hospitality they gave us gifts the food was was good it was okay it's, they have the entertainment had quran you could read the quran in a wonderful this is the food it was good so we flew from Lagos to Doha in Qatar before we then flew to Saudi Arabia. Let me mention that uh, the airport looked very nice. I, it's not how it was when I was in Nigeria eight years ago. So the airport was really, really nice. However, those that work at the airport, those immigration, those airport staff, I don't know who oversees these people. They need to do better. You know, I said this in my earlier video when we got to Nigeria, they were still begging. 
they are going for pilgrimage. They were even old people. They were asking them, "Ah, what do you have for us? What do you have for us?" It was annoying to say the least. Like, ah, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know when when this will stop, but it needs to stop. Like, I know that people cannot ask for help, but if everybody you meet at the airport is expecting you to give them something, then that's a problem. Anyway, we landed in Doha, Qatar safely, and I changed because I wanted to enter. The city we had six hours layover so i changed and i went into doha in qatar to explore a bit i'll have another video to show you that what i got to do in qatar for six hours or thereabouts and yeah that's pretty much it we all gone we said that we all wore the same outfits we wore this guinea outfit and the same hijab you know just for uniformity it was nice so this is the flight from doha to medina we flew to medina from doha from qatar and the food was good, good entertainment still, good hospitality, the service was good. We had various videos to educate you on how to perform your art. Because art is not about just traveling to Saudi Arabia. You have to fulfill all the rights so your art can count. You have to do your best, really. And then pray that Allah accepts your art. It's, it's, even me, before I went to art, I didn't know, you know all the rigorous activities that art involves. In, that's you know it's involved in art until I went to art. That's what they gave to us. They gave us this bag that had a praying mat. It had a tespio. It had so many good things they gave to us on the flights. Really cool. And then this is us landing Medina. We had turbulence in the hair. I've had turbulence in the hair a couple of times on the flights, but this one I think was the worst of them. Like we were scared to our bone marrow. <laughs> Especially the older people, like they were scared. It was really, really bad. If a woman was saying that, ah, when we got when we got off the flights, like she was saying, ah, driver, oh she corner, she she corner by, <laughs> like who the driver, she said the pilot, you know, went into a corner, you know. Apparently, it was just a turbulence, but it was really, really scary. But along the line, we got to Medina safely, and this is us. Landing on this holy land, you know, gave me chills. This is a place I've read about in the Quran, in the Adiv. So getting on the soil made me feel very overwhelmed in a good way. I'm the lie, we all got to Medina safely and then there was a bus that then transported us from Medina Airport to our hotel. And then we drove, we had this bus, we all went on it, he gave us some snacks uh, on the on the, on the the bus, because it was quite, a, I think, I, I don't know, it was a 30 minutes drive or one hour, I can't even remember. And then we go to, you know, uh, to the city. Meanwhile, when we were driving from the airport to Medina, I saw some very archaic or old looking, I'm like, this is how Medina is, but apparently that's like the suburb, like outside of the city. We drove just so, and they gave us this. Meanwhile, and here, let me add that they took our passports. All our passports were taken from us on this bus. They said that that's what Saudi Arabia government does. All your passports are taken from you, and then when you want to go, the day you leave Saudi Arabia, they'll return your, your passport to you. They claim that people run away, you know, and don't want to go back to their country. So for that, they take our passport, and then when you're about to leave, they hand over your passport back to you. So our passports were taken from us when we were on the bus. And this is us just getting approaching our hotel. It was they had some you know ancient looking places and then when we when we drove uh, more we saw the modern places and then we got to our hotel. So I'll stop here for now and I'll get to show you you know what we got to do in Medina. Okay. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please subscribe to my channel if you're here to comment, like, share, and do all those good stuff. See you in my next video by God's grace. That's our hotel, by the way. Bye.